Hello folks, and welcome to the Vertigo Tea Party, and let's try the Spatials. It's developed by Weird and Rye. You can pick it up on Steam for $12.99 for Windows, Steam Play, and Mac. It supports Steam achievements, trading cards, and cloud saves. I will be playing a uh, press copy that was supplied to me to make this overall coverage video. So as usually what I do with this types of game, I'm going to start a new game first. I have a save that I will be going to to show you guys later. Uh, but for now, we'll just be starting a normal game. You can start a no normal difficulty, which is what I did, since this is my first time playing. But later on, once you kind of learn the game, you might want to go in here and change some things to make the game a little bit more difficult. Let's go ahead and get started, though. So we're going to skip all of this. Basically, the idea, it's its an interesting game. It's a, its a mix of... Basically, you're, it's like a base builder tycoon game. But at the same time, it has RPG elements. Uh, there's also aspects of going to other planets and fighting enemies and things of that nature. It's got a lot of interesting little things built together. So your home base is an asteroid. Now, you never leave this asteroid, this very flat asteroid that you're on. Uh, you do end up unlocking other planets, but you never, never build anywhere else. This is your one and only base of operations. Uh, which I actually prefer it that way. I don't like building multiple bases. So anyway, on the left here, let's go over the main part of this section of the game. I guess you would call this the base building of the tycoon section of the game. So you have rooms where you can do various things. For example, the spaceport. This is where visitors will come in. Uh, because you do want visitors to come by and spend money. That's how you make money in this game, or credits as they're called. So I've picked a spaceport. And you can draw the spaceport out. Drawing out the rooms is really nice. I like that uh, you can just kind of add on to it. Like if, oh, if I miss, I didn't do it quite right, I can just keep left clicking. And if I like, you know what? No, I don't like any of this. I can hold left shift and highlight again to get rid of it. Uh, I like quite like that. Uh, I've also learned not to make the rooms big. I'm used to from other games like this, making the rooms kind of big. We don't really need that for a lot of the rooms. We're gonna make this room pretty small. And you'll notice I didn't put it right against this this wall, you don't want to put rooms right next to each other because of the way the the building works, or the way they build the buildings. Uh, so what you have to do is you kind of give them a little bit of space, and then you build a corridor to connect them. Now our officers, and officers are basically employees, they will actually start building out the base. So we'll watch them here for a bit, you can zoom out. I don't think you can rotate the camera. It doesn't really end up mattering a whole lot. It would be nice if you could, but it's it's not a big deal. There's only been a few times where I've wanted to rotate the camera, and again, it's it's been very minor issues. So as you can see, they're working on getting all of this built out here. And while we wait on that, let's go ahead and build another room just so we can kind of get that moving along. What else do we have? We have a warehouse. Warehouse, very important. We'll need a decent amount of room for that. And we'll put that right here. We'll need a little bit more room for the warehouse. In fact, we'll just build it all the way here. And we'll make it a little bit skinnier, I guess. And we'll build another corridor. Get them working on that. Now, everything on the left here, and you will get more options. This is not all the options you have. You have to research to learn more building types that you can create. And we'll cover that, of course, in just a little bit. But I'm trying to cut, get, get a very basic base built. Uh, obviously we'll need a barracks as well for them to sleep in. I think also your visitors, your like the tourists if you will, also will uh, sleep as well in the barracks. Which is a bit weird that it's called the barracks. And again you can kind of see here, oops hang on, I kind of messed that up. Let me change it around a little bit. Barracks themselves don't really need to be that large either. We'll go, we'll go with this. I think that should be good enough. Like I said, from other games like this, I'm used to having to build the rooms, you know, much larger than you normally would think. Uh, and in this game, a lot of buildings, or a lot of rooms, not really necessary. So we can see this room is done. This was our spaceport. All it really needs is a dock. Visitors use this dock to teleport in and out of the station. It costs 500 credits. Our money is up here, and we'll go over the UI in just a little bit. But when you left click, you'll notice when I select this, let me go back to it. Green, you have green floors and you have red floors. As you might imagine, green means where you can place this, red means, well, you cannot place it there. Uh, obviously, the dock can only be placed in the spaceport, 
And when you place it, you have to confirm it. You can turn it if you want, which this is not a great one to really show that. Because turning it doesn't do anything. So we're just going to plop it down. And one nice thing about this game, anyone who's played games like this, where you have to place things down that that the play that the little units have to use like a bench or you know a fat you know like a bit like where you build things they don't really seem to get stuck a lot like on each other or like running into the wall they can't get to it to use it i haven't really run into any problems with that so far then again i've been building the buildings really really large so they're still filling out the things here we'll wait for them to do that let's go over the ui while we wait for them very quickly here is it, it, it's it, the UI took me some getting used to. It's a little different than what I'm used to. Not drastically, but a bit. So we have our main screens up here. We have our home, space, missions, and we have our crew here. And you can see they're level one, so which means, of course, they can level up at some point, which we'll go over that in detail later on. This shows our visitors and what they're thinking of our establishment. So far, you can tell, not overly happy. And I think they always end up thinking it's very bad when they first get here. You kind of have to win them over. If they think it's that bad, you wonder why they come here in the first place, but whatever. So you can see, you know, you can see their vitals, cons uh, their consumerism, hunger, thirst, sleep. So they do use the beds in your, uh, in your barracks, which is a bit weird that they'd be using the barracks beds, but whatever. Uh, you can also click on this to zoom in on them to see what they're doing. This person's just standing around because there's not really a heck of a lot to do right now. Let's go ahead and build some other things while we, since we've got all that done. First of all, we don't need the warehouse right now. I want to get the barracks up so people can sleep. Throw a few beds down. I'm going to turn those around. And you can also might have noticed that when I place an object, it's not placing it immediately. It's placing a blueprint down. So you still need the officers to go over there. You'll see this progress bar and they'll lay that item down. Now, some things are just purely decoration, like these lockers. I'm gonna throw a few lockers down because they need some place to put their stuff. But as with everything else, they have to be placed. Now, one thing I've noticed, and I don't quite understand how this works, is some items, if you look here, for example, on the bed, we're looking at the bed properties. It says decoration influence and it says decors two. So, I mean, does that help in any way? I don't know if, if that has any effect. I don't know why lockers have an effect on a bed, but I don't know. But it's a counter, so I'm assuming at least some items will be affected by decorations that you put. Maybe it increases their sleep. Maybe it makes them sleep faster. I, I honestly don't really know how that works. Uh, let's also go ahead and real quick, we'll put some stuff in our warehouse. The, these pallets. We'll place a few of these. Now, talking of the UI, actually we're going to place quite a few of these. I'll throw a recycler over there too. You'll notice down here we have the inventory space, and you'll watch this go up as we place new pallets. This is one of the first things you'll want to make, by the way, because you'll quickly fill this up. Uh, and we'll go over that in just a bit. Let's finish going over the UI. Uh, the rocket, sh think that shows you the next time that more uh, visitors will show up. Or maybe when the ones that are here are going to leave. I'm not sure. Uh, it also shows you the overall happiness. Credits, pretty self-explanatory. That's your money. Here is... This is basically kind of a catch-all for messages, your graphs. It also allows you to control things. Such as, let's say, this, I'm creating product fine soup you can limit how many that you put in to your inventory at any given time which will definitely cover that because that's pretty important uh, research this shows you this is basically how you unlock new rooms uh, also they have the tutorial stuff i don't the tutorial is a little confusing because basically instead of just walking through a guided tour sections have tutorials so You'll notice like when I go here, there's a tutorial guy down here. And if I click on him, he'll talk, tell me about navigation and planets. If I go, yep, I got it. Uh, and if you go here, he's got a different tutorial. That's interesting, but sometimes it can be a pain early on when you're trying to figure out how to do something. You don't know what screen it is. And you just kind of click around and keep clicking on him to have him tell you what that screen is to see if it's related to what you, you want. And I would have really preferred to have a special stage uh, or section that was just for, for tutorial. 
frankly, but uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, it, it did have a little bit of a learning curve because some things are a bit different than it is in other games. But anyway, let's continue going over the interface real quick. This is the like the the, the uh, research tree where you use money and research points to unlock various basically buildings, creating different things, manufacturing different things, making different buildings. So you can build little androids that clean your house for you or make better food, things like, like that. Uh, this is their their uh, like their tutorial area, which or not tutorial, but just kind of the help section, which is a nice addition. Then you have the pause button, which takes you to the menu, which that's a bit strange for me. And you can turn off the audio and blah, blah, blah there. On the left-hand side here, we have just what you can build. There's also destruction tools here. Uh, as you unlock new things in the research tree, more tabs will open up or that'll just get added to uh, you know existing tabs, depending on what it is. Uh, here you can turn off things like the little pop-ups that show progress on things being built. You can turn that off. You can turn walls off as well to make it a little bit easier when you're building. Generally, I prefer to leave that on. Again, all your inventory stuff will show up down here. You can sort it. And you can click on things like beds, lockers, etc., to see uh, like see their properties. Things can be a little bit tricky to click on sometimes, like that. You see me trying to click on this recycler multiple times. Uh, so that's a little funky. I I'd like to, them to clean that up just a bit. It's not a big deal, but it can be a bit kind of annoying to click three or four times to try to click on what you what you're looking for. Eventually, you figure out which pixels uh, are the one to go for. But regardless. Uh, the recycler is kind of an interesting thing here where when you go on missions you get items and you can actually drop them into the recycler and when you hit recycle it'll actually spit something else out and sometimes you can upgrade items that way or get more resources that you need it's pretty neat uh, very uh, it's a neat little um, mechanic that they have so let's talk about hmm First of all, let's talk about uh, missions, I guess, because this is probably one of the first things you'll want to do. And you'll probably, you'll want to have at least some of your officers off on missions all the time. So let's look at, let's just grab a mission here. You see typical looting, uh, it's normal difficulty level one, and our rewards will be experience. I uh, will also get these abilities. Uh, and we'll go over the abilities in just a little bit here. But for now, we want, we need to send, you can send up to three. There's not really any reason I can think of not to send three, uh, just because they all get the same amount of experience. So we're just gonna assign just, you know, random guys here. And you can see as we add more, our chance of success goes up. And depending on the level of the mission and the level of your officers, you can actually hit 100% before you fill it up. Again, so if all you really care about is getting the rewards other than the experience, then I could see maybe just sending two, but I pretty much always send three. It costs us 100 credits to start. So let's go ahead and do that. I think every mission takes like three minutes, uh, three or four minutes, so it's pretty quick. And most things you're doing in the game, don't pause it, which might seem like a minor thing, but it, I don't feel that it is because you'll often be doing multiple things that have nothing to do with base building. And this will still be counting down in your mission timer, which is good because that means you can go do other things and when you're by the time you're done, it's like, oh, my officers are back. I can send them on another mission and I can collect my rewards from this mission. So things like that. Um, let's go ahead. We've only got two, probably only, we can send two, right? Let's go ahead and send them. It's only 86%. We'll go ahead and start. Now keep in mind, now we've sent all of our officers off. And if we go to our officers tab, it will show you to the right what they're doing, which I actually very much like that. It makes it very easy to see where your officers are located, what they're doing. If they got the cross swords, it means they're on the mission. If there's a rocket ship, they mean they're on what I guess would be their your away team, the one that goes to planets and I guess colonizes them or conquers them. I don't really know what in game terms that would be the equivalent of but we'll we'll say that it colonizes them even though it's not really what it's doing but we'll, we'll just call it that for simplicity's sake but um let's go ahead and look at our officers while we're waiting for them to get back anyway because this is a pretty important screen because your officers are important to your base so they have levels as you can see and there's actually quite a bit of levels up to 20 uh, 30 yeah 30 is max 
and you can look down here and this will show you what's important to this officer now there's some pretty standard things so for example I've noticed no officer wants hygiene or really cares about hygiene very much before level 8 but there will be some a little bit of discrepancies between them so for example you'll see at level 6 this officer really craves desserts this one craves pizza this one craves ration which I don't know how you would crave rations but whatever uh, so you want to meet that person's craving by having the right research and by producing enough of that object because then you get like 10% work speed which means that when they're not off on a mission they're when a, when a officer is basically officer is both your kind of like your heroes who go on missions uh, who colonize planets things of that nature but they're also the ones who build out your base they produce items, things of that nature. So they, they're kind of a dual purpose thing. So you want to level them up to get that bonus, get these bonuses. 10% work to duplicates. I, what I'm assuming that means is that if you normally would have made one cupcake, you make two cupcakes or, you know, three widgets or whatever it is. Uh, so, and, and it also keeps them happier. If a officer gets too unhappy, they'll leave your base. I haven't come even close to that. My officer has been pretty easy to keep happy uh, up until this point. I presume that gets harder and harder as you go along, because as you see, the more and more you go, uh, the further you go, the more like luxury type things that they're going to need. Even though you can see they also get really nice bonuses as well, so it's worth keeping them high level. Uh, here we have our owns and craves. You can assign an object to an officer. I've never bothered to do that. Probably more useful later on when they're harder to keep happy, perhaps. Uh, this also shows what they're currently craving, which right now is nothing. Uh, you can also change their work type so that you can say, okay, this guy focuses on production. Like, let's say this guy has a natural bonus to creating duplicates. You'd want to make sure he's on production and not building out rooms. Really, that's not that useful. Uh, I've not found it to be that useful up until this point, but it's there. And if you really want to be efficient, especially probably on higher difficulties, it would be it would be useful. So you can also fire them, which I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can. And combat. Here's a pretty important aspect of the character is the combat. As far as I know, this only affects when you go to colonize the planets. So uh, the phaser, like this is their weapon, the phaser. Right now we don't really have a whole lot of stuff, and I'll go into this a little bit more on my, my saved file because there's more options. But basically you have all kinds of health and energy bonuses, power bonuses, uh, energy regen bonuses, uh, and there's also a special skill. The special skill is based on the type of... of uh, of job they have. So you have scientist, doctor, strategist, uh, strategist, strategist, strategist. Yeah, there we go. Uh, engineer, etc. So apparently, engineers love explosive, which I'm I'm down with that. So this will be more more. I guess you would call it class specific or job specific, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so you want to keep that in mind. So our it looks like uh, at least one of our jobs is completed. The other one's about to. Now here's an important aspect. I don't really not crazy about this, but when when your team is finished with a contract or a mission or what do you want to call it, it's, they call it contracts. So we'll call them contracts. When they're finished with a contract, to get the reward, you have to hit complete. Until then, you don't get the reward. So there's been times where I've sent them on a mission to get, because it had a lot of water rewards, and I forgot about it, and I'm like, where's my water? And I forgot that I hadn't come in here and completed it. So complete that, and we'll complete this as well. And you can see here as well that you can get all kinds of rewards. You can get items and abilities. You can get uh, seeds, uh, slimes, water. You can get a uh, bonus experience. So, you know, if you have a bunch of low level recruits that you just hired, you might want to send them on a bunch of bonus experience type missions. But uh, let's go over here real quick. This guy doesn't have a sidearm. Do we have any weapons? We don't have any weapons for him at all. Neither does he. Oh boy, that's a bummer. We don't have any, but that's fine. It usually starts off pretty, pretty easy. So, or yeah, pretty easy. So let's move on to the next important aspect of this game. And this, this one is very important. And, and I was struggling because I didn't realize how important this was early on. So 
First of all, you have, this is like your galaxy screen. And as you can see, there's quite a few galaxies here. There's six galaxies, but we're here in Apsit. So we're gonna go in here, and even within the galaxies, you have different systems. We have five different systems in here. These are all locked until I do the mission related, or the story related mission for my galaxy. And from looking at this, it actually looks like the galaxies might be randomly generated for every time that you start a new game, which is pretty interesting. I thought it was just static, but it looks like it is a different, because this is definitely a different setup than I have on my loaded game. So when we go here, uh, you, we can go to any of these planets here. Uh, our home is on the asteroid. Why we decided to build on an asteroid is, is beyond me. But we can go to any of these, as these planets here and colonize them, as I've been calling it. There's also this planet here, you'll notice, has that icon. This is where the, the Federation, the Human Federation, is located. Uh, from here, you can either recruit new people, let's hide that, Re recruit new people, which we will, just for the heck of it, and this will refill once in a while if you need more recruits. Uh, you can also assign officers to work in the embassy. Now, and we're not going to do that right now, but basically what that does is, once you've colonized a planet, you can automatically get resources from that planet. And as you can see right now, you get resources every 12 minutes. For every officer you put in here, that lowers the time down to, as far as I can tell, a minimum of two minutes. Now, one thing I don't like is that it doesn't seem to matter the level of the officer you use. So if I put a level two officer in here versus a level five, it doesn't matter. The time stays the same. So none of their benefits really seem to matter. So I would just put the lowest level officers you possibly can to put in here. Uh, so we're going to close out of that, and we're going to go on a mission here. And you can see when we click on a, uh, on a planet, we can see a few things. We'll get a research point, we'll get a random level 1 item, we'll get 59 water, and we'll get 265 credits. So we can, uh, on, over here, you can take one officer from each class. So we have strategist, doctor, and scientist already filled in. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab this engineer and a diplomat. Again, I don't see any reason not to take as many people as possible. I think it didn't fill them in because they don't have weapons, but we can still use their, their abilities. Here we can also see what resources the planet will offer. Now, I cannot harvest any of these uh, until I've done our very first mission. We're not actually going to do the mission right this second. I'm going to load my game here in just a second so that you can see that. Uh, you can also click these buttons. It'll show you what resources those planets have, which I like that very much uh, because sometimes I'm like, oh, man, I desperately need water. So I need to do the planets with water. So it gives me a quick view of what's going on without having to click every single planet. You can also see uh, conquest pro progression. Uh, you can also see embassy efficiency, which it's actually off screen right now, which is pretty funny. But it will show you like how many officers you have working at the embassy up to a max of three, which right now we have zero. Sorry, cat's being uh, <laughs> that's cat decided to uh, try to jump up at a bad time. All right, so that's pretty much most of the UI. Let's go ahead and hop into a game that I've got going so that you can see how it looks a little bit later on. Now, fair warning, my <laughs> my layout here is definitely suboptimal. Uh, again, I, you can see I've built these rooms way bigger than they needed to be. I got this big room and only like two things manufacturing. Now, maybe later on, it might be handy to have a bigger room, but right now, it's just a lot of wasted space. Also, it's just inefficient in other ways, but anyway. So, uh, this is a decent amount in. You can see we're starting to have a lot of different resources. And what's interesting is like things like skills actually take up inventory space. It's not really a big deal since it's easy and cheap to get additional space, but it's just kind of amusing. And, like I said, you can take, let's say we're going to take these skills, throw them in here and recycle them. Now, I don't know if it helps if you try to put similar things together. Like, I don't know if that matters at all. If it's just 100% random, or if let's say I put these two rockets in here and recycle, do I tend to get more weapon-based skills or what? Now this is just platinum, which I don't even know what to do with that just yet, uh, but I've gotten a little bit of it. So, now let's talk about the manufacturing process and 
we'll go on a mission as well, but I want to talk about this because this was very confusing to me at first. So if you look at our, our tree here, I've got a few things unlocked. So one of the first things I unlocked was the hall. When you look at the hall, is you can create a di cheap diner and you make a lunch table and a refreshments counter. And you're like, okay, so I see we can, you know, we have rations and juice and dessert all unlocked. But, and it's, it's kind of hard to go back now because I, I forget exactly how it was. But basically I couldn't make the items that I needed. I think I had to have this other room to do that and that wasn't very clear. Uh, so that, that was very confusing, but to clear that up a little bit before I confuse myself too much, you have, you know, you have the, the lunch table here, which serves pizza and rations, and then you had the refreshments, which sells juice and dessert. Now this doesn't just manufacture those things magically. You have to have them in the diner. You have to create them in the diner and you create them in the diner using these basic, basic kitchens. Now a kitchen can only produce one type of thing at a time. Whether it's pizza, rations, juice, or dessert. So if you want to make all four and just save yourself from the micromanagement, that's what I would suggest you do. Uh, you would need to make four different machines. And again, I've got a bunch of extra space, which I absolutely didn't need here. Now, you'll notice these red squares over these, these kitchens, or these basic kitchens. The reason they're doing that is because they're not producing anything. Uh, and if you click on it, it says, Warning, this factory is waiting for the stock of rations to drop below the global limit set in the stat screen. It's a fancy way of saying, I've set a limit of how many, this, what is this making? This is making rations. I have a limit of how many rations to make. And once you hit that limit, stop making them. So if you look down here, I've got 39 rations. And this is very important. Uh, I really wish they would have set the, the cues or the limits much lower. Because I kept running out of stuff and I'm like, why am I running out of things like water and all these other uh, re stuff that I need, these base ingredients that I need? The reason is because by default, your limit of any item is 100. There's no reason early in the game for you to have a, a stockpile of 100. There's just no reason. That's way more than you need. So you can go in here and you can decrease the global stock limit of every individual item. So here you can see we've got rations. Right now, my limit is 20, and I can increase or decrease that number as I see fit. And again, it starts at 100, which again, maybe later on that's nice, but early on, you just end up emptying out all of your resources. Because water is a great example. I kept running out of water, and I'm like, why are we running out of water? water? And then I realized I had, you know, like 50 pizzas and 45 rations and all this other stuff that I, I had way too much of. Uh, so I just limited to that and that has helped a whole lot. So how do you make any individual item? So this this kitchen is creating, what's it creating? It's creating juice. If you look here, it takes two water and one fruit to make two juice. And again, this is where that little uh, benefit that some officers have where sometimes instead of making two juices, they'll make four juices, which is actually very, very nice, especially when you're running low on, uh, on resources. So, you need this to make the juice. And where do you get this stuff? The water and the fruits. That's where the planets come in. So if we go back to the planets, let's check some planets that have already colonized, okay? We got Ocop, a cop here. And we, you can see basically the stuff that's glowing is stuff that I'm not using. The, the res There's resources are there. I think that's like I don't know what that is, like slime or goo, and then this is aluminum, are the ones that I'm not I'm not using this. I'm not harvesting that resource, so to speak. The ones that are not glowing are the ones that I am. And you can see over here we're getting two per period. And down here we see you got a two minute period because I had three officers working at the embassy. Uh, and to get the next resource or buy the mineral rights or the resource rights for the next slot will cost me 89 credits. As far as I can tell, this Almost all credit costs in the game are a one-time thing. I don't think that you pay salaries for the various officers. I don't think. I think you just buy them and that's it, as far as I can tell. So, this is pretty cheap. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy a few of these. And you can see as you buy more, the price goes up. And of course, this tally increases as well. You'll also notice over here, it says unlock bonus 1x. Complete this planet mission in higher difficulties for higher resource multipliers. So 
let's do a normal mission. Actually, you know let's go to a planet we haven't been to yet. Let's go to level 3 planet. And we'll just pick this one. And we've... I've already got my crew here. And you'll notice some of them have specific names. Brienne of Tarth, Arya Stark, Tyrion Lannister. You can rename your officers. This is very handy because later on, you're going to have easily 15-ish officers, if not more. And especially when you've got a, a crew you're building specifically to go on these uh, these colonization missions. You, because you'll be giving them special items. You'll be giving them specific abilities. It makes it easy to keep track of them if they're named. But the naming is a little flaky right now. Sometimes you click the button to rename and it works. Sometimes you do and it doesn't. I don't know why. Hopefully they fix that. But, uh, but some of them, as you can see, I've named, again, just to make it easier to keep them to, to get on the mission. So we see when we finish this mission, we'll get a research, po research point. We'll get a random three item, three star item. We'll get 81 seasons to 270 credits. So let's go ahead and start. Complete the objectives on the planet to spawn a boss with a chance of high quality loot. It says that pretty much every single time. Pretty much you always uh, complete the mission objectives and then a boss spawns who's tougher than everything else and you get extra loot and this is obviously decidedly different than everything else uh, in the in that we've seen up until this point so you left click and it moves the officers automatically it's gonna we're gonna left click and blow that little guy away so far the missions even on on hard and we'll talk about the difficulty levels a little bit later uh, have been really really easy I think our officers are probably a bit over leveled just because I did contracts so much before I realized that I really needed to do these missions. But uh, it's it's a pretty simple setup. You have your officers. You get you get their information down here: health, uh, energy. Energy does not regenerate for most classes, except for I think the scientist. Uh, but the scientist has an ability where if I hit five, it regenerates energy for them, uh, and it's got a very short cooldown. And so you'll want to be using that quite a bit. I like the graphical effect too. He opens up like a little little data pad and uh, regenerates everybody's health. You'll also notice there's numbers next to each officer. So we have number one, two, three, etc. That's their special abilities that's related to their class. So let's go ahead and eliminate the sergeant. He's going to be kind of tough. So I'm going to try to use my abilities on here. I'm going to use rifle, use rockets, boom. Those rockets, the engineer's special abilities, like the rockets are so good they do so much damage and in an area a lot of times what i'll do and i'm hopefully i can show you here uh, he's got the the rockets or grenades often and if you do it just right you can get all the enemies kind of bunched up and then kill them all at once with uh, like one rocket it's really nice so let's see if we can do it with these two here if we hurry up yep boom and you can see every time they get uh, experience we also got inventory down here, which shows things that we found so far. And it also, the missions are, it, these missions are pretty, pretty generic overall. It's pretty much doing the same thing every time. Let's go ahead and grenade. Boom, got them all. Nice. Uh, it's pretty samey, right? You, oh man, this guy ran way over there. Let's go back and kill him. But it's, it's pretty standard. So you'll land and it'll say, go kill five pirates or six pirates and you do that and it's like okay go kill six more pirates or kill this commander or do you know whatever things like that and you do that like three or four times and then the boss spawns you kill the spawn the boss and then you you leave that's pretty much the way it goes every single time let's see if we can't again get in here that's so nice i'm also using heals from the medic and the energy regen the whole time He's got a he's got a flamethrower. All right, so I guess that was the boss. So yeah, the bosses aren't too tough, at least on a normal difficulty. Once you're done, you can leave the planet. However, I usually like to look around because you find these crates that will give you extra money, uh, extra items, things like that. But just for demonstration purposes, I think you understand how this works. Uh, and again, so I'll just kill this game too, just because. Just because. There we go, and you get like slime from killing creatures, things like that. But that's how the, the away team type thing works. It's pretty interesting. Uh, it's a little repetitive, like I said, because the missions are very, very standard. Uh, and I'm going to leave real quick just so that I can show you something. We just did this planet, right? Yeah, I think so. 
Now you can see we have an, a hard difficulty. Now this should increase how much resources we get. So we're going to go ahead and do the same, same crew here. We'll still get a bunch of seeds and we get a random level 3 item. Just so we can see the difficulty difference. Again, so far I've not had any diff diff had too much difficulties doing the difficult uh, missions. Uh, however, this is the first time I've tried it on level 3, so it could be difficult. Now, the special boss that spawns, he actually is pretty nasty, so we will have to be careful there. This is just a sergeant, though. And as you can see, he definitely took more energy to kill, or he took more time to kill. And that wasn't even the special boss, that was just the, the regular guy. And again, I'm the buttons I'm pressing are basically the, the regen energy and reheal. And you can see the, t the countdown timers are, tend to be very short. The longest timer I've seen is like five seconds. He, uh, this, the um, scientist, I think it's a scientist, re, uh, like restock of en energy is like only five seconds. So we're actually going to go this way first. Another interesting thing is a lot of times, again, you'll get two different missions that say eliminate six pirates. But you'll notice there's pirates here that don't have the exclamation mark. Well, that probably means that we're going to get a mission to kill them. And we just haven't got it yet. Oh. Now, that's actually a good example. Just like I planned it. Just like I planned it. Alright, let's back up. Come on. Now, you notice one guy actually quote-unquote died. He's in stasis. They don't die. I don't think there's a way for your guys to die. However, I specifically have this diplomat with an ability to bring back guys that are in stasis. And we'll use the medic and the scientist to get this guy back up, get his health back up going. And you'll see this This does have a long cooldown, actually. The, the bringing up somebody back from stasis is about a minute. That's fair enough. Uh, honestly, it'd probably be even more fair if you could only use it once per mission or something. But whatever. We're going to go down here. And this is not really a great place to fight. I should be pulling them back. But... And also, enemies with an asterisk are tougher than regular enemies. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Uh, looks like we wasted that one. That the special ability there. Alright. Get everybody healed up. And a lot of times you can pull these guys away from their buddies. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where are you going? I love that AE. It's so good. The engineer's abilities are just rocking. Using your weapons also uses energy, just left-clicking. And that's all I'm doing, by the way. I'm just holding left-click on the enemy to do regular attacks. And then I use the um, number keys. I use the number keys to uh, to do their special abilities. So, again, uh, this person's the shotgun is the one. The doctor is five to do the energy. Or the four is health, five is energy, etc. So it's pretty easy. One thing you have to be careful of, though, sometimes the boss, like the secret boss, if you want to call it that, will spawn right on top of you. So that can be uh, really unpleasant if you're unprepared or not prepared. So let's try him out. Somebody could actually die. These guys are, like I said, a little tougher. We're going to use our abilities as fast as we can. We're going to try to keep ourselves healed up. Use the rifle. Actually, that was actually easier than the other area. And once you're done with everything, she tells you visit the planet again anytime for more Leaving Profit. So you can actually just keep redoing a planet over and over if you want. Uh, the difficulties, it doesn't like just keep going up and up and up. Like just not, oh, okay, wow. Okay, I, I lie, there is a new what WTF difficulty. Which is amusing in itself. Uh, but you see we have a two time unlock bonus. So now if we pick one water, we'll get two per period. Which is, again, very, very nice. So you have a reason to go back and do these harder difficulties to get more and more resources. However, and again, I presume this will change later on. But once I realized I could set the global inventory so that I wasn't just constantly mass producing things when they were just sitting there going unused, it wasn't really a big deal anymore. Uh, resources stopped becoming a problem. Up until then, yeah, I was constantly running out of water uh, and other resources because I just, they were, like I said, they'd keep making pizzas even though there were 60 pizzas sitting there, you know, in the, like, getting cold. Nobody was, was eating them. Uh, so there's really no point, again, at this level to be using that many. Now, I wonder, one thing I'm curious of is if maybe if I add another one of these, another dock... 
I'm wondering if that means more people will come. I don't know, because there's not really enough visitors to make it worth our while. So now that we have more production capacity, it would be nice to get more people. Again, I don't know if this increases how many people show up. If it doesn't, then I don't know what does. Maybe this just means that more people will come at a time. Actually, yeah, maybe it does. Maybe it does uh, mean more people will show up. So yeah, I guess you will want a bigger starport once you had the production means to support it so that you can make more and more money. So that's, and, and that's pretty much the pattern, right? Is you start your base off, you build what you can based on the resource that you have, research that you have. Starting off, you either send your officers on uh, contracts, which are the shorter, like three minute things, uh, or you, or, or slash and, you go and colonize other planets because the main thing you need from planets is the research points because that's the only way to get research points is to to go to other planets as far as i can tell uh so you can't unlock all this other other things wow there's a lot to learn here as well uh, there's you you can't really build anything else you're you're stuck so that's why i kind of got stuck at the beginning because i was i didn't realize how important the colonization of the other planets was so that's one of the main reasons you want to go. Also, of course, you gain access to resources that you can use to, you know, make pizzas or robots or parts that people come and buy in your in your space station, things like that, basically to make you money. So, process is basically build all the rooms you can, send send your your best crew out to planets to, you know, colonize new planets to get resources and do higher difficulties so that you can get them faster. Meanwhile, you send your, your free officers out to do contracts, to level them up, to, you know, to gain, you know, just a few extra resources here and there, gain extra, well, I don't think you gain credits from them, things, things like that, and also items as well. And that, and then you, once you've done this, whatever the mission with the exclamation mark is, you can now move on to the next level of the next level system so once you've done this you don't have to do all these if you want to like just move on to the next planet you can just do this one whatever it is and then you can move on to level four and then once you've moved to level four you can do level five and then once you've done level five you can now skip on to the next system you might i might have misspoke earlier on you might maybe build a new base on different systems once you move to a whole new galaxy or whatever that I don't know because obviously I haven't gotten that far. Uh, I would, th I think you keep the same base though. I think you keep, keep the same base though. I, and I feel relatively confident of that. Um, but um, and one you know quick thing here to show you, again on these machines you can change what they create, mini servo or repair parts. Again, research dictates what you can make. As I research more things, more things will be producible and you can micromanage this so i could say like this is not being used right now because i have too many mini servos right i just got way more than i need 65 i could just you know delete this one and just keep swapping this one back and forth again i don't see if there's a real big price reason to do that uh, the the cost isn't that big and it doesn't seem like there's any kind of maintenance cost ongoing that to keep it up so there's like once you've bought it i mean what's the point point? Uh, and like i said i don't like that let level of micromanagement having to switch back and forth uh, that would just get really annoying for me so that's pretty much the spatials uh the only thing i wish it had was a free play where and which i guess this pretty much is free play. So, uh, you know to be fair so i guess it doesn't really even need one i'm just so used to these types of games having them by default uh, that I guess it's it doesn't really need one and it looks like every time you start a new game it generates the planets differently uh, so the only thing free play I guess would have would be that you could just go to any planet whenever you wanted you wouldn't have to like progress in a very specific uh, manner to do so so I don't I guess it wouldn't really matter but yeah it definitely does look like we're getting more people here and they're just very unhappy uh, one thing that seems a little bit overly simplistic to me is that if you like watch someone they tend to just go back and forth between things so for, and of course as i say that he's not doing anything but if i picked on this person for example they'll say oh i want they want i want a dessert so they'll come and they'll get dessert and then they'll say oh i need 
I need parts, so I'll go buy a parts. I want to, I want a drink, and they'll go to get a drink, and like, oh, I need more parts, and they'll go back and buy more parts. They'll go, oh, I'll need a drink, so they'll go back to get more drink. So it's like they buy a drink, and their thirst only goes up a little bit. So they end up buying like five or six drinks just to to saturate their thirst, which is good for money, but it's just kind of weird how that works. It's, it's I wouldn't call it a major negative or anything, but it's just it's just a bit weird. So anyway, yeah, that's that's the spatials. Overall, it's pretty enjoyable. It's it's trying to kind of put a lot of different things together. You got your base building tycoon part, then you have you know the RPG parts where you know you're you're gearing up your your officers. And uh, one nice benefit, by the way, I really like the interface of this game was it took me a little getting used to, but I actually quite like it. One thing I like is that because every single person has six slots it can be a real pain to go okay did they get an upgrade well let me see no i'm gonna cancel all right you know and do that for every single thing can be a bit tedious but what it does is like let's say i've got a health upgrade that gives me more health than what this does i can look in here and find out where it is because I know there is one. It's not like I have to check every single time they get a new item. Because as you can see, we've already got quite a few, in uh, quite a few officers. Now, granted, you don't really need to gear these other ones up. I don't see a reason for it. I don't think that it helps them on contracts. Maybe it does. If it does, then yes, you'll want to you know give them decent items. But your your best stuff is going to be the t your away team, the one that's going to be going to other planets and actively fighting the enemies. You'll want to have them have the best weapons and health and energy regen and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I like that it tells you that. That saves you a lot of, of, of pain. You can see. Uh, one thing that's kind of weird, and at first I didn't like, but it turned out it's just not a big deal, is that anything, whether it's a weapon or an ability, if you replace it, so let's say I want this da 23 damage mitigation versus 15, you destroy the current one and replace it with the, the new one so you don't get it back that doesn't really end up mattering though to be honest uh it, it would just end up being more stuff i threw into the recycler uh, but it's something to keep in mind that that it does happen but so uh, yeah uh, it's quite a fun game especially for 13 dollars i think it's fun now if you want a game that's just this one thing just a tycoon aspect or just the you know the RPG and going to planets and colonizing them, you're probably not gonna like it because all of the different sections are kind of shallow. The tycoon parts a bit shallow, the attack the RPG elements are a bit shallow, the colonizing planets a bit shallow. But overall, if you kind of like having to manage all of that together, I think you'll enjoy this. I do think that going to the planets, the colonization part. Which that I'm calling it the one where you send your away team to the planet to fight whatever bad guys are there I could see that part getting tedious at if not tedious repetitive at the very least Because it's the same thing over and over like I said you go in You it's like kill these six pirates. Okay kill these six pirates. Okay kill this one uh, General okay now fight this special spawn that it's gonna pop up that's slightly difficult more difficult than everything else Like okay, you've done that. All right good if you want more resources do that mission again slightly harder To get more resources so I could definitely see that part getting a little bit old and like a little bit long in the tooth eventually uh, But you know if you kind of mix it up, it won't be so bad. I think the big problem with that though is there's not a lot to do outside of that to kind of break you away from it. Yes, you can do the base building, but you're so limited by research that you don't really get a whole lot of time to, to really maximize that kind of this the, the tycoon base building aspect. But again, for 13 bucks, I've, I've enjoyed it. Uh, it. Like I said, at first I was getting frustrated because I didn't really understand how the production process worked but i'm actually really quite enjoying it so far and there's some rooms i don't know what the heck they're for like i've got this like garden room that i could build nobody ever seems to go in there uh, so it's not really too useful but uh, overall yeah i i'm i'm enjoying it so definitely take a look at it uh, again it's the spatials 12.99 on steam i will have a link to the game 
in the video description below if you want to check it out. Uh, speaking of, if you'd like to see other games you may not have heard of, make sure to subscribe. Leave comments in the comment section below. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you next time.